Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our worship on this bright Sunday morning. On Thursday, it was 40 days after Easter Sunday, and we observed then Ascension Day. Well, this is the first Sunday after Ascension Day, and so we gather together for worship, and we make this our theme for our time together. So let's commence with a responsive reading. I will take the part of the leader and you read the part where it says all. God raised Christ from the dead. Alleluia. When Christ ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He ascended higher than the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Almighty God, grant that we who believe in the resurrected Jesus into heaven may also there ascend in heart and mind to you who lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Our song book this morning the song number 39389 Rejoice, rejoice, Christ is in you. The hope of glory is our hearts. He lived, he lived, he breathed in he breathed is in you. Arise a mighty army. We arise.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because of your faithfulness over our lives. We thank you for our community. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for our people. We thank you for the peace you have granted this nation. We thank you that you are answering the sense over this pandemic. You have shown us your faithfulness by the result of our battles so far. We thank you because it's a new Sunday morning. We thank you because you are going to build us in this service. All we ask is that your presence be made more manifest through the songs, through the testimonies, and through the words of life. We ask by the end of this service that we have every cause to bless your name because we know that through our activities of this morning, you are going to transform us and give us your message. Thank you because you are going to answer prayers. We ask also that you use the instruments that are prepared for this morning service to bless us. To the end, we will have every cause to bless your name. Thank you because you are going to answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your faithfulness, for your goodness upon our lives. We say, Hallowed be your name this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we believe that your presence will come and dwell with us, Lord, even as we worship in our individual rooms, Lord. We pray that you come and bless us today. Lord, at the end of it all, we will have a cause to glorify your holy name. Let your name alone be glorified, for we know that you have answered us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Cadet, what do you think heaven is going to be like? Um, I think that heaven is going to be a place where are the righteous we come and rest and rejoice. So whoever is doing good is hoping to be, is hope, the person is hoping to go somewhere and that is heaven. It's a place of rest by the righteous. Are you, are you looking forward to it? Wow, my, I'm looking for it, praying to be there, and I must be there by the grace of God. Cadet, what do you think heaven is going to be like? I think heaven is going to be like 
a place that we have never seen though we used to hear of it it's going to be like just like we are told it's going to be a street made of gold as in there won't be deaths there will be no deaths everybody will be ageless as in the beauty of it alone as in the way we, we are being told of how heaven is it's what I will long and will always fight to see that I make I want to like make heaven because I, I, I was told that there will be no there will be no death, there will be no pain, there will be no sickness. Every place will be made of gold. The the, the, the beauty of it alone is what's worth going for. Cadet, what do you think heaven is going to be like? It's going to be a place that will full of joy, who will enjoy without peace and with peace who will celebrate together. There shall be no war, no hatred, no envy, if you smile, if you because God has prepared that place for the choosing, those that will perform, those that will do good to live there. People will be enjoying that place. Thank you very much indeed, cadets, for telling us what you think heaven is going to be like. Now, before we listen to some more of our friends answer that same question, let's talk about it ourselves. As we listen to some music, let us discuss among ourselves what we think heaven is going to be like. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to that home on God's celestial shore. we 
Cadet, what do you think heaven is going to be like? Ah, heaven? I will say based on uh, what I've read in the Bible because I've never been there before. Kind of what we've read in the Bible. So heaven is going to be a wonderful place where it will be void of pain, void of sorrow, void of suffering. It's going to be a place of everlasting joy. And I see it as the crown of our living here because to every as into everything to it. when you run a race there is a price there is a crown to it so run the christian race i see it as a crown to our race here on earth so to me i just feel like my joy will be complete but it will be complete when i make it to heaven because it's just going to be a totally different place from earth where we have uh, so much struggles and but then it's just going to be an easy life free life for me. it's going to be a glorious place and i wish and hope to be there um, heaven is going to be, for my own understanding, heaven is a place where the righteous one will spend their eternity. Uh, it's going to be a, a place of eternity where the children of God, the people that fulfill the promise of God, the people that have passed all the punishment where they would spend their eternal life and it's a place of joy. That is what I think that they have here. Thank you. Heaven is going to be a glorious place. As a Christian that I am, I sometimes I visualize a place that we'll be singing all through, be praising God. You'll not be hungry, you'll not drink water, you'll not, no pains, no sorrow. You know, you are free to worship God the way you want to. And you have that joy overflows in your heart. So be a nice place and all, everybody wants to be there. And you know, we Christians too want to be there. So it's a glorious place. The streets are made of gold. There shall be no more death or oh, night. Joy forever. Thy kingdom come, O oh Lord, we pray. Maranatha. Thy kingdom come. Stole you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever.
praise God. We shall take our Bible reading this moment and we shall be reading from the book of Acts chapter 1 from verse 1 to 11. Acts chapter 1, 1 to 11. I read. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until today he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Jerusalem, to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the time or that the Father has said by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into the heaven. I take verse 11, the last again. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into heaven? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. May the Lord give interpretation of his word in our hearts in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless. We shall further add praises to God as we are going to sing from our song book number 553. The song says to leave the world below, march upward with our band, and step by step we mean to go, and step by step we mean to go, to Zion's happy land, to Zion's happy land. We are marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching onward to Zion, that beautiful city of God.
morning cadets on Thursday the 21st of May the Thursday that we've just passed the church around the world celebrated Ascension Day the day when we remember how Jesus departed from his disciples and ascended into heaven we read those verses as we have already shared together in the very first chapter of Acts. Now on Ascension Day we remember that the physical presence of Jesus would no longer be with the disciples but the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon them and fill them and empower them. So indeed it was um, a sad day and yet also one in which they could look back with joy. Now I do think that one of the hardest human experiences is that of physical separation from family and loved ones. And as I was thinking about that, I remembered the time when we took our daughter to university for the first time and left her there. And then a couple of years later, our son too went to university. And after we left them there and returned home, it, it was a great sense of loss because uh, there was a space at home where they would have been and they were no longer. Up until their 18th birthdays, they had always lived at home with us and been with us wherever we served as Salvation Army officers going to school or college. So we did have that sense of loss when we left them at university but you know we also had a sense of joy because we knew that they were growing into adulthood and they would be learning to make decisions on their own and they would be maturing um, as adults. Now I'm also reminded that there are many who are struggling in our world today because of a physical separation from family or friends uh, because of the coronavirus. There are many countries where people need to be isolated so there can be no handshakes or no hugs for them and they are physically separated sometimes from the people that they love the most. I think physical presence is a very powerful thing and you don't realize it until the physical presence of someone you love is taken away from you and you see that space that they used to occupy. Well when Jesus left his disciples for the last time it was a bittersweet moment. Bitter because they would experience a great sense of loss. Sweet because after Jesus had left them the Holy Spirit would fill them with power. He would energize them and enable them to become witnesses. They would be assured of Jesus' presence not in a physical way but in a spiritual way deep within their hearts. I do think it is interesting to note the difference uh, in the disciples reaction after the crucifixion and the resurrection with their reaction after the ascension. If you remember after the crucifixion and even after some of those resurrection appearances the disciples were dejected. They were wondering what it was they were to do and in fact they even scattered from each other. If you remember at the end of John's Gospel Peter said I'm going fishing and he and some of the others left the main group and went off to fish. But if you contrast that with their reaction after the ascension of Jesus he told them to remain in Jerusalem and this they did and they remained together in unity as they waited for the Holy Spirit to come and to transform them. The ascension marks an end and a beginning. It marks the end of course of the physical presence 
of Jesus with the disciples and also their dependence upon what they could physically see and what they could hear. The new beginning was one that was built upon the presence and the purpose of God through the power of the Holy Spirit and the unity of the fellowship of the believers. We see that very strongly in the beginning of the book of Acts that the believers were always together. They lived together in unity and in fellowship. Now Jesus commanded his disciples to do two things before he left them. Firstly, to receive the Holy Spirit. So if they were holding on to anything else in their hearts, they had to let it go to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And secondly, Jesus told the disciples to be my witnesses throughout the world. They were to preach, they were to teach, they were to heal and pray. Not only were they to do these things by doing them, but by being, being open to the Spirit and being citizens of heaven living on earth. Their lives were to reflect heaven on earth. Now Jesus had left them to remain with his Father in heaven, but they were to remain united to him through receiving the power of the Holy Spirit and through being glimpses of heaven as witnesses throughout the earth. The ascension of Jesus is something of a mystery to many Christians. Where did Jesus go? Why did he need to leave his disciples? Well, the answer lies in his instructions. As we've already seen, they were to receive the Holy Spirit and they were to be his witnesses. In doing that, they would announce to the world that the kingdom of God is real and that heaven is not a distant dream, but it is the dwelling place of God who is ready to welcome all who will call on his name and believe. Now there is a, a beautiful song in our songbook that we're going to hear in a few moments. It's number 700. And it reminds us that through all the joys and through the sorrows of life, through the best and through the worst of times, Jesus offers us his continual presence. When we remember how he departed from his disciples, we can be assured that without that day we would not have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit with us. We would be powerless, we would be hopeless, we would be lost. But we can, as that song reminds us, have a steely eyed endurance and the strength to fight and win because we have the constant presence of Jesus with us. I invite you to just pray with me now. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you as we have remembered on this uh, Ascension Day how your physical presence left the earth but in place of that presence your spiritual power came in a wonderful and mighty way. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts today as it did all those years ago fill those first disciples. Lord we pray that we will have glimpses of heaven today that we will know that we are citizens of your kingdom. We ask that you will fill us and empower us and guide us and Lord for those who are feeling the pain of separation today who are afraid who are anxious may they know your peace and may they know your healing and your joy Lord we thank you for your message for your word to us and ask that as we meditate and think on it that you will pour out your abundant blessings upon us here at the training college 
I pray that they will infill all of the cadets and all of the staff and their families. May we each one be blessed today, for we ask it in and through the mighty and powerful name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. the joys and for the sorrows, the best and worst of times, for this moment, for tomorrow, for all that lies behind. Fears the crowd around me, for the failure of my plans, for the dreams of all It is the darkness that covers the aid, oppression, justice, and pain. Nations are sleeping in hopeless despair. Though many have come in your name, watching while sanity dies, touched by the madness and lies, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, 
come Lord Jesus pour out your spirit on us today Hallelujah
What was going on was that I had a mechanical runny nose. I had a little tube running down the side of my nose, dripping a fluorescing fluid. The goal was to see how far my nasal secretions might travel if I had a cold and who might get those on them. To give you an idea about how much it spread on me alone, normally my skin would not fluoresce under black light. Are you ready? Over the weekend, we saw signs of the challenges that may lie ahead. In the Republic of Korea, bars and clubs were shut as a confirmed case led to many contacts being traced. In Wuhan, China, the first cluster of cases since their lockdown was lifted was identified. Germany has also reported an increase in cases since an easing of restrictions. Fortunately, all three countries have systems in place to detect and respond to a resurgence in cases. You've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. we have come to the conclusion of our worship today. I know we long to be together and soon we pray that will be possible. But for the time being we must meet together but separate in our rooms. But nevertheless the Lord has been with us, he has blessed us, he has challenged us and we have enjoyed our time with him. Now we will conclude our meeting this morning with prayer. In the presence of Christ we have gathered. In the grace of Christ we depart. May God clothe you with power on high. May God put this power to work in each of us. May Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gift and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit,
be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning to you all and God bless you.